Welcome to another episode of the Strong Family Project Podcast. I'm Joe, joined by Mel, and today we'll be talking on family tips to help you get outdoors. We've been running the Strong Family Life private Facebook page, and a lot of people assume, because it's got an outdoorsy background picture and we're outdoorsy people, and a lot of our photographs are us hiking and climbing, that it's an outdoors-oriented page. And that's not true. It's a family-oriented page and how we can develop relationships in the household that leads to outcomes that you desire for your children and yourselves. Uh, It is worthy of talking about the impact of getting outdoors and doing things together. While the physical outdoors has lots of benefits for us, while it can improve, do things such as improve our our memory, improve our brain power, improve our overall health, improve our skin, improve our immunity. There's a lot of physical benefits to going outdoors, but today we're going to be talking about the family ones. Hey, Mel. Welcome back to the Strong Family Project podcast, where we guide you on the path to raising confident, independent, and resilient children in a strong family environment. And I think I chose the right t-shirt because it's got trees and pine cones and trees on the back. You've become very outdoorsy (laughs) now. I have. I've been before too, but there's most more recently you've well, become yeah, more outdoorsy, acceptably outdoorsy, <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't always been this way for us. We, when we first got married, we wanted to live below our means. We had a single, uh, single bedroom apartment we lived in for about nine months, in not really an outdoorsy area, and we would still make time. There's a snowstorm, and I was teaching high school at the time. It was canceled. Sometimes we'd walk. I remember walking down to the price chopper to get some groceries and just enjoying the uh, nature, even if it was messy and sloppy and snowy out there. Then we moved into uh, a duplex that we purchased so we could rent out half to to set up our financial future for our family. And we had a backyard, and we started doing some more outdoorsy things there, which is the kind of things you do out there, Mel. It was funny because the backyard was sloped and then it would flatten, so we would do workouts out there. Did we like roll? No, what did we do? We bear crawled like up the hill. Mm. So I think in our backyard it was mostly workout stuff. Or like we had a dog at the time, so we would chase her around. Throw a tennis ball for old moose. I remember one workout story out there. We used to do like tons of workout stuff back there. That's where I started my company, a little garage gym. And so we'd work out there with a couple of the clients. But in one such instance, we w- called a local like industrial tire place and they had an old tire that my brother Pat got over to the house and we thought, you know what? We can just flip this around the yard because we didn't have a lot of money. We, we didn't have a lot of gym equipment. We had a couple rubber mats that we had to push the lawnmower out of the way to be able to use and work out inside. And so like, all right, cool. We're going to get this tire, which was a great workout because we've done tire flips. We did some strongman competitions in those early days when things were wild. And we got it out of the truck and we set it at the top of the yard. And we're like, all right, we'll just put it down the yard and flip it around. We just started rolling. And this <laughs> thing is... thinking of, yeah. Yeah, this thing's like... You can imagine, I'm 6'4". The tire was just below my eye. So maybe nose level standing up. It wasn't super fat, but standing up, it was pretty tall. And it started getting some momentum. We're running next to it, like trying to push it. And it's just rolling. And it gets up speed. And just there's this wooded area and creek behind our house. And it just went crashing through all these dead trees and deep down into the woods and it took us the whole workout to just flip it back up it was exhausting and we just left it in the yard went and showered and never wanted to do that again (laughs) and so that was our tire adventure but we're getting outdoors more and that's where our kids started popping up they started popping all around (laughs) they're all about and we take them out on the deck which was nice but also i remember the first early days when you set a kid on grass and it confuses them a little bit and they love the feel of grass and exploring everything actually we're taking a walk down memory lane now because now that i'm thinking about it we lived on a fairly busy street you mm-hmm. couldn't just let the kids out from the front yard but we did have a park a really nice park just maybe a half a mile down the street so i could stroller Logan down, he's our firstborn, and it was a really lovely park. And even one time, remember it flooded, and we mm-hmm. like walked down there, and it was like totally covered in water, which is crazy to see. But that was a lovely park, and that's actually the, one of the places where he first started touching grass, and I remember it so clearly. Like that curiosity about something, just like touching it, and you'd like run the grass across his skin, see what it feels like that. I remember that beautiful curiosity. And I, I also love being near creeks. So we always try to find 
remember you go around the block and there would be this flood wall, mm -hmm. ironically. <laughs> and we would walk along the flood wall and then there was a creek down there. And we found this little bend in the creek where it'd be really cool. You could go in the water a little bit. And we found something similar here. But we're seeking it out without even realizing it. We just be outdoors and try to find something within walking distance to enjoy. We would take Moose down there, throw the ball for her. She'd pretend to swim. And so what we learned in those early days is it doesn't have to be these huge outdoor adventures. You don't have to go find a state park that's 45 minutes away that might have some cool recreational activities and plan a weekend and then go there. It could be if you have young kids, put them in the stroller, walk to the park, set them on the grass, see what happens for 30 minutes and scoop them back up and take them home. If it's older kids, yeah, you might bring a couple other things. There's amazing games now for the parks. It's that one spike ball that people love to get outdoors. You just play some old school catch is a great way to spend some time. Just, Frisbee the kids like. I was just thinking that. Do you drive by parks a lot these days and see people just throwing a ball around? Sometimes. I do see some parents and kids doing it, but not as much as, of course, I would like. That's our recommendation. Hey, just go out and play a little catch. And if they're not great at it, you're the parent. Be patient and teach them. We used to go play wall ball. So we grew up in a area that we didn't have a, a robust outdoors area. There's a school across the street from us. And once wall of the school didn't have any windows on it. And there was like a, it was brick school. And it had one layer of bricks for aesthetics that was sticking out. And they like laid it the other way. So it looked cool. And so we'd go over there and we would get as close as we could and we'd throw a tennis ball as hard as we could off that and try to hit the angle of the top of the bricks. So then it would bounce up at an angle and see if, if we can clear the parking lot with it. And we'd just hammer this tennis ball off the wall and see if it would clear the parking lot. But we'd go up to that parking lot and we would cast fishing poles like in the parking lot and just reel it in. Cast fish, fishing poles, reel it in. We didn't have a pond. We were fishing in a parking lot exactly like that. But that's, I think it's incredible because you found something to do with boredom you found it outside and it didn't require something entertaining you. You found something to entertain yourself. And this reminds me, so my sister and I used to have this two pairs of red boots, these rubber boots, and we used to walk up the creek together. So there was a creek near the house I grew up at and we would walk up the creek in these boots and then it, we would just love being out there. And then eventually she grew out of her pair. So then I would wear her pair and then my younger cousin would wear the, my old pair. And we used to walk up and eventually we found out there was this like, it was small, but like for, to us, very exciting waterfall at the top. We would pretend that we were like shooting like a music video in front of these waterfalls. Well, TLC, don't That's go what it was. chasing waterfalls. <laughs> is that, that the one? That is the one. <laughs> that is totally the one. But the point is I mean, like, I nailed that. All we had The, the vocals was, were great. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> I'll never forget it. All we had was this pair of red boots. That's it. And we would spend hours... Out Listen there, to the river, rivers and streams that you used to, okay. right? Is that you should have stopped after no? I so I can go the whole th whole song. <laughs> but here, this is a ten minute Tuesday episode, so we're not just going to take a stroll down memory lane. We're going to give you one actionable tip to help you in your outdoor life as a family. I'm going to go first, so Mel can think of hers because I didn't tell her to come up with one actionable tip before I press record. But here, I'm actually going to go slightly too far. The first thing about getting outdoors with a family is don't overload expectations on it. It's, it's a lot of times like, hey, let's go outdoors and see what we can find and do and learn and play with. If you go outside with this expectation, like, all right, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna have an amazing time. And then you just sit there and wait for an amazing time to drop from the sky and fall on you. It's just doesn't work like that. You have to create the amazing t time. And that's some of the power of the outdoors. It forces you to be creative and it provides you with so many things that you can go play with. We talk creeks, rocks, a parking lot, a wall, all these things light up the creative part of your brain and your kids' brains where you let them do it to go and just create and make some activities. And the power of that is they're also the ones creating the activities. It's not like a game that is put in a phone in front of them that's created for them and they are just the robot that presses the buttons. They are the game's creator and that builds self-confidence when you get outdoors. The second part of that is don't be scared of the outdoors. When it's outdoors, it can get hot. It can get <laughs> cold. The wind might blow. It might even sprinkle on you sometimes. When those things happen, I highly encourage you to not let that ruin your good time. 
there's powerful growth in those moments where you say, it's raining. Okay, let's go find a puddle to play in. And you have some adversity and you overcome it very quickly in that day. If you're someone, someone that's, ah, too sunny, ah, too cloudy, ah, too rainy, ah, too hot, ah, too cold, ah, the wind's blowing, and you never go out, it actually deteriorates your family's resilience because they see you being soft. That's the nicest way I can put it. Mel, hit them with your, I shouldn't say being soft. Mel, what's the nicer way to say it? Being oh. ca- overly cautious. Sure. Go ahead with your tip. Before I do my tip, you made me think of a cool activity we thought of one time. We just pick up a rock and we say, I'm going to hit that tree. And it's really fun. So everybody Ooh, takes yeah. a turn, hit like throwing a rock and trying to hit a tree. Or Logan was doing this with his BB gun. We're just trying to shoot like a particular branch. And you know how exciting it is when you actually get it? Yeah, throwing pine cones. <clears throat> a great one. Go ahead. Okay. So my tip is get excited about nature. And this is really part of my personality but like since moving to uh, Colorado like I'm obsessed with the birds like we hang bird feeders we watch the feeders and even though it's my own little quirky thing I like you notice the kids start to really enjoy it so when I want now that I'm like attuned to it when we're out we'll hear different birds and it gets exciting or now it's rose hip season in Colorado so as I'm like walking along I'm noticing these rose hips and I try to point it out to the kids one time ever and I found a drying flower like I don't even know what it's called pot or something and we just picked and looked at it all the like 200 little baby seeds fell out it was like the coolest thing so I think we take nature for granted and if you just take I don't know take a little walk and get excited about it in the springtime this year we had a lot of rain and all the pine trees just had incredible like new little spring green growths and it looked like Christmas lights everywhere to me so I think just if you start to open your eyes to how exciting nature can be and get excited about birds or a plant or whatever how things look in different seasons it creates I don't know it's almost like this inner calm it gives you and this excitement about just being outside and not requiring something else to get you excited and one side note on that I would also get curious about nature so you get excited about going out there and looking around get curious about why things are the way they are I like to play a game called, can I eat that? (laughs) If you enjoyed the episode, visit us at strongfamilyproject.com. We have the seven steps of strong family path. That'll give you some more household guidance on building relationships and it will go in depth. Family core values, family meetings. It's all there for you free at strongfamilyproject.com. Talk to you on the next episode.